Around 244 million years ago, what's now a mountainous area in southwestern China was part of a vast sea. It was filled with a thriving marine ecosystem. Just 8 million years after the Great Dying, the extinction that ended the Permian period and began the Triassic. And there's one fossil site there in Luoping County that gives us an incredible snapshot into this window of time when life was recovering from the most devastating mass extinction ever known. Most of the fossils from this site are of arthropods, like ancient horseshoe crabs and crustaceans. But many different kinds of fish were also present, including coelacanths as well as marine reptiles like ichthyosaurs and the ridiculously long-necked tanny strophiids that don't really look like anything today. But none of these animals were quite as strange as adipodentatus. Figuring out what this creature's face actually looked like would take paleontologists years, both because of how its skull fossilized and because of its very odd feeding strategy. See, Adipodentatus was a herbivore, and herbivorous marine tetrapods living or extinct are pretty rare. Because it turns out switching from eating other animals to eating plants is a harder transition to make than you might think. And understanding how and why this weird animal did it can help us shine a light on at least one way for ecosystems to bounce back from even the worst mass extinction. In 2014, paleontologists described the first specimen of Adipodentatus from Luoping. Luoping is considered a Lagerstätte, a site that produces exceptionally preserved fossils. There are arthropods from this site with soft tissue preservation and even a coelacanth with preserved embryos. And Adipodentatus was yet another example of this beautiful preservation. But the fossil, including its skull, was squashed flat from side to side. What the researchers could tell was that this creature was a marine reptile that would have been around 3 meters long, and that it was likely a close relative of the Sauropterygians, the group that includes plesiosaurs and pliosaurs. It had a slender body, a long neck, and odd hoof-like toe tips on all four limbs. And it wouldn't have been all that strange, at least for the Triassic, if it wasn't for its head. Its upper jaw looked like it was folded in half in the middle and then split open to expose its teeth, kind of like the track of a zipper, with the lower jaw forming the bottom of this super weird triangular snout. And those jaws were filled with tiny teeth. The lower jaw alone contained around 190 needle-like teeth. That's where the name Adipodentatus comes from. It literally means unusual teeth. Its peculiar dentition looked like some pterosaurs that are suspected to have been filter feeders and whose teeth would have been too fragile to grasp or crunch prey. As a relative of the Sauropterygians, it seemed safe at the time to say it was probably a carnivore eating tiny invertebrates that it filtered from the muddy sea floor. After all, there weren't any herbivorous marine reptiles known from this part of the Triassic or from any time earlier. But then, in 2016, this interpretation had to be completely abandoned when two new specimens were described that flipped this image on its head. Literally. Unlike the first fossil, these specimens had been flattened top to bottom rather than side to side, which gave researchers a much clearer view of the skull. And it was still just as strange. Instead of having an upper jaw that was vertically split in half, these new skulls showed that Adipodentatus actually had a hammerhead with wide jaws that poked out to the sides and even more exceptionally specialized teeth. Along the front of its hammerhead, it had spatulate teeth that stuck out, kind of like a scraper. And those delicate needle-like teeth that had been important in the original filter feeding interpretation were actually positioned further back in its jaws. This whole setup was so weird that paleontologists studying it literally had to break out modeling clay and toothpicks to try to visualize what Adipodentatus's head would have looked like in 3D. And even after that, it still wasn't entirely clear how this strange mouth was being used to do what mouths do best, eat. So researchers went back to the fossil record to try to find something they could compare Adipodentatus to. And what they came up with was another odd marine reptile called Hinotis. Hinotis was a peculiar placodont from the late Triassic of Germany that actually was a Sauropterygian, that group of marine reptiles that Adipodentatus might be related to. 
Now, while Hinotis didn't have a hammer head, it did have a very rectangular head with the front of its mouth matching the flat scraper-like area that's found in Adipodentatus. There were even reports of baleen-like structures being found in its jaws, similar to Adipodentatus's tiny teeth. Based on these features, Hinotis is thought to have used the front of its mouth to scrape vegetation up. Then it opened its mouth and throat wide to gulp in the now floating plants, filtering out the water with those baleen-like structures and leaving it with a mouthful of food. If Adipodentatus was doing something similar, that means that it was probably also a herbivore, not the tiny crustacean-eating carnivore it was originally interpreted to be, making it the oldest herbivorous marine reptile in the fossil record. Which would mean that it not only looked weird, but its lifestyle was pretty strange too. Because herbivorous marine tetrapods are very rare, there are just a handful in the Mesozoic and there are only a few alive today, with the manatees, the dugons, marine iguanas, and green sea turtles being pretty much it. And to make things more complicated, Adipodentatus probably came from a carnivorous ancestor. See, there are some difficulties involved in switching from a carnivorous to a herbivorous diet that Adipodentatus or its ancestors would have had to overcome during its evolution. Plants are a much trickier food source to digest than meat, largely because of the cellulose in their cell walls. So herbivores have adaptations to deal with this that carnivores don't have. For example, some rely on doing tons of chewing to physically break down the tougher plant material. But Adipodentatus definitely wasn't doing this with those weird little needle teeth. What it was doing though is still kind of a mystery. It's possible that it did something like what we see in marine iguanas today and had endosymbiotic bacteria in its gut that helped it digest its dinner. Or maybe it had other physiological adaptations, like longer intestines for fermentation that helped it get the most out of its food, which is how manatees make herbivory work. Unfortunately, these kinds of things are rarely preserved in the fossil record, so we can only make educated guesses based on what we know about living marine herbivores for now. So why even become a herbivore if it's so difficult? Well, there are some real advantages to herbivory. One is that you don't have to expend a lot of energy chasing down your lunch every day, like you would as a predator. Another is that there's generally more food easily available at lower trophic levels. Higher up in the food web, there's just less biomass, the mass of all the organisms that occupy that level. And plants are primary producers that make their food from sunlight. They form the lowest level and have the greatest biomass. And remember, Adipodentatus wasn't alone in its ecosystem. The other fauna at Luoping may have also played a part in pushing Adipodentatus towards herbivory. The diversity of fish and marine reptiles present at Luoping, from tiny ones all the way up to top predators, is not exceeded at any time in later Triassic fossil sites. This means that roughly 8 million years after the Permo-Triassic extinction, the biggest mass extinction ever, Adipodentatus was living in a fully recovered ecosystem. With such a range of carnivorous marine reptiles present in the formation, it may have been advantageous for it to do something different to avoid competition for resources. This is called niche partitioning, or niche partitioning, and I've talked about it before, like in our episode When Sharks Swam the Great Plains. And on top of this, prehistoric Luoping would have been an ideal environment for marine plants to grow. We know that it was a near shore, shallow water environment because terrestrial plants and arthropods are found alongside the marine species that make up most of the fossils at this site. The shallow water would have allowed sunlight to penetrate the waves, which is necessary for plants to be able to photosynthesize. And these conditions coming together may have helped drive the evolution of a large herbivore like Adipodentatus. Despite the remarkable discoveries of new Adipodentatus fossils that helped paleontologists figure out what it looked like and how it might have lived, there are still mysteries to be solved about its evolutionary history. For example, we don't really know where it came from or what its ancestors were. And we don't know what happened to it, other than given how rare herbivory is as a strategy for marine tetrapods, it seems to have been an evolutionary dead end. But while it was around, its odd feeding strategy must have helped it thrive in a post-extinction world. 
The recent discovery of Adipodentatus reminds us that the strange time in Earth's history known as the Triassic hasn't given up all its secrets just yet. And I, for one, can't wait to see what we find next. Let's face it, this month's eontologists are awesome. Sean Dennis, Jake Hart, Annie and Eric Higgins, John Davidson Ng, and Patrick Seifert. Become an eonite by supporting us at patreon.com slash eons. Remember, eonites get perks like submitting a joke for us to read, like this one from Charles Copley. What do you call an ugly dinosaur? An eyesore. Also, check us out on social media and celebrate a bunch of random holidays with us, such as Geological Map Day and National Velociraptor Awareness Day. Yes, those two days both exist. Find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And you can follow me on Instagram at fossil underscore librarian. And as always, thank you for joining me in the Constantine Hassa studio. Subscribe at youtube.com slash eons for more creature features.